Yeah, very very warm. Good morning to one and all who joined in this monthly type of half May. Now we uh, today we are having one sixty second monthly talk from Association for Advancement of Pest Management in Horticultural Ecosystems. Uh, incidentally, this is the hundred and twenty seventh month talk, which is being happening uh, without a break. And today with us, uh, Dr. M S Thakur, uh, who is an advisor Nano and M E M S Center, N M I T, Nita Minakshi Institute of Technology. Uh, Bangalore. Uh, <clears throat> before joining here, uh, he he was in uh, CSRI Institute CFTRA as a chief scientist and former head uh, in Mysore. Uh, before going to the talk on affordable biosensors for sustainable farming, I would like to give a brief uh, introduction about uh, today's speaker, uh, Dr. Thakur. He is working, presently working as a professor and head of bioengineering research center and advanced center for clean and green energy in NMIT. He was chief scientist and former head bioengineering department, CSIRA, Central Food Technology Research Institute, Mysore, India. Hello. He made a very significant pioneering contributions and uh, uh, he's, he's a leading biosensor research, researcher in India for the last 35 years. Uh, he has published more than 300 outstanding research papers and books along with 15 patents. Uh, as an expert in biosensor, uh, food technology and nanobiotechnology, he has delivered many invited lectures and keynote addresses in national and international symposia and conferences. He has transferred his biosensor technology to reflect his research confidence on application of lab research to the commercialization. And that Thaku has made fundamental discoveries in bio-inspired biomolecular electronics, nanotechnology, and bio biophotonics, interfacing the biochemical events with the properties of nanoparticles and biomolecules using fluorescence, chemiluminescence, bioluminescence with resonance energy transfers phenomenon. He has made breakthrough in stabilization of biomolecules for making biosensor technology viable. Uh, he is the president of uh, Biosensor Society of India and actively involved in promoting research in biosensor and nanobiotechnology in India. Uh, he was a visiting scientist at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Cambridge, USA, University of Maryland, USA, University of Lund, Sweden, University of Kalmar, Sweden, EPFL, Switzerland, and IMT, Switzerland. He was an expert committee member and uh, constituted by Office of Principal Scientific Advisor, Government of India on Explosive Detection, Department of Science and Technology, Indian Council of Medical Research, uh, UGC, and he was also an expert member of FSSAI Containment Panel. Uh, <clears throat> apart from this, he is a member of several other uh, scientific organizations. During last uh, 35 years, he has handled several national and international projects on biosensor research which were funded by CSIR, DST, DBT, Indo-Swiss, Indo-Swedish, and Indo-Spanish uh, agencies. He also received funding from private industries. He is a member of editorial board of international several international journals. He has been awarded uh, for his outstanding contributions in biosensor research. He has received many awards for his scientific contributions. With this uh, uh, brief introduction, I request the, Dr. Thakur to go ahead with uh, today's presentation. Uh, yeah. Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Sridhar. Good morning, everyone, those who are participating. I'm audible? Yes, yeah, sir. You are audible. Okay. Please go. Yeah. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for giving me opportunity to talk about the affordable biosensor, a powerful tool for sustaining sustainable farming. So this is a very a slightly complicated. As you know, uh, this is a, a keywords. One is affordable, another biosensor, sustainable farming. This is a very, very challenging field. And nowadays, um, uh, India and world has uh, global warming problems. And land urbanization is occurring very, very fast. And you see in Bangalore, it is expanding like anything. Farming land is going down. And excessive use of the um, uh, pesticides and fertilizers 
are really serious problem so therefore the sustainable farming has lot of things to do therefore on this aspect what biosensor can do although i have worked for about 40 years on this biosensor uh, for the many and uh, you know aware uh, you, you may be knowing about the uh, covid 19 uh, this uh, simple test a drop of uh, saliva can detect the covid 19 so similar aspect we can develop biosensors for the uh, using antibody antigen and nanotechnology we will i will briefly discuss about that but still i have too much to talk uh, maybe uh, dr sridhar how much time i have to talk yeah how much in a uh, part uh, minutes okay sir part uh, minutes part uh, yes. to one hour hmm? yes yes uh, okay. But uh, it should not be too much to uh, for the audience. Anyway, yeah, okay. uh, briefly I tell because it is yeah, a... briefly you cover in the discussion yes. part. You can uh, uh, cover whatever you could not yes, cover. Yes, yes. Okay. So therefore, okay. uh, this is a biosensor area because sensors and biosensors they are crucial for everything. If you go to doctor, he will not just uh, prescribe the medicines. He will diagnose and uh, then prescribe the medicines. Therefore, human being as well as plant, they have same similarity because both are living. As a human being, we don't understand their uh, health conditions of the plant, but they are our life giving. They give the food, they give the oxygen. Oxygen is not at all available without plant. So therefore, they are very crucial. Our health is depend on the food and food comes from the agriculture no. and horticulture crop. So Hello. therefore, our safety. Yeah, just, uh, just to start it. Yeah. Uh, our uh, our That's health is depend on the plant. So therefore, there is no uh, uh, the nature has not created any uh, synthetic food. Whatever we have to eat, we eat direct from the biological sources, like a uh, plant sources. And uh, another point is that animal sources. So therefore, uh, safety and nutrition are very important for us. So keeping these ideas, I have made my presentation on this. Uh, so uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Arfridhar has already briefed about my bio data. Uh, I would like to say now, challenges to be faced for the food security. And uh, India is now, uh, population is increased day by day. So uh, the, uh, the, the scientist and farmer has responsibility of to produce and to secure food that is a production very high and safety of the food so therefore there are few uh, now uh, in 2024 the world population is 8.1 billion and it will increase about 10 billion in 2050 i think with this serious job and there is no synthetic food by which we can survive so therefore, uh, responsibility of the scientist and um, um, farm, uh, um, uh, farmers are food security, food safety, food nutrition, and to keep this uh, farm sustainability, and now global warming is a problem, soil fertility, and above what, we have very small land holding. It is not a community farming. It is not a, a large farming. Whereas in US and other um, um, foreign country, they have a lot of land and they can use automation, automated um, machinery for the um, uh, uh, crop, uh, crop um, uh, growth as well as uh, harvesting. So therefore, we have a lot of challenges. So this smart farming and sustainability, we have to check how we yes, do sir. that. Challenges for the India farmer. India has merged as the largest producer of milk, spices, cotton, and pulse. The second largest producer of the wheat, rice, fruit, and vegetable. However, as India looks forward to 2030 and beyond, its food system faced many challenges ranging from increasing pressure mm -hmm. on the natural resources like a soil, water, mm -hmm. air, and forest to climate change. Fragmenting land holding, that is the problem in our country. Because uh, the, there are big farmers, there are very small farmers having a one acre land, half acre land, and they sustain their life. So therefore, it is not organized farming. Therefore, we have to uh, think over how we can sustain, how we can um, uh, uh, increase our 
um, smart farming. So therefore, there are a lot of challenges for the scientists to promote. So this is what is the smart farming, how we can revolutionize agriculture sustainability future. Because as soon as our growth is one, growth population is increasing day by day. And uh, um, for uh, um, uh, 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 smart farming has potential, revolutionize the agriculture, making more efficient, sustainable to the condition used by resources optimal level. So we have to use because water scarcity, fertilizer, um, uh, pesticide, um, uh, soil fertility, and many, many things are there. So we have to, we cannot use them excess. We cannot do in um, lower, uh, I mean, low um, conditions. We have to make optimal. So therefore, we have to, for smart farming, we require sensors. And, and we have to monitor many parameters for the crop health. So thus crop health makes you much more uh, productivity. So therefore, what kind of um, the sensors we have to use, I will uh, discuss about that. Quality and quantity also very important. And uh, this technology has to be done. Now we have challenges. Now farmers are now um, um, uh, farmers log in Delhi. So therefore, they are not looking at this serious problem. I think it is a shocking news that India has cancer drain. I think you know that cancer train is running from the Batinda to Bikaner. And most of the train passengers are very much suffer with the cancer because in Punjab, cancer treatment is very expensive. Whereas um, Bikaner, Rajasthan, the cancer treatment is very low. So people in Punjab, they are not thinking about this. They are bothered about their minimum price. So therefore, these are serious issues in our country. Another one is Assam. Just recently, High Court has given verdict that there is no uh, immediate detection of pesticide. Uh, Ismail, would you like to say something? Dr. Sridhar, can I continue? Yes, yeah, sir. Please continue. Uh, please. So you know that, uh, I think, uh, Dr. Sridhar, you know that uh, High Court has given, Assam High Court has given that verdict that there is no bios or um, sensor or detection system available for pesticides immediately to use the farmer. But we have taken challenge. Uh, uh, our um, yes. institute has taken challenge and we have developed the immediate, small, quick uh, pesticide detection system. So that's why I say that these are sensors and biosensors are very important for the um, 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 health and safety of the um, uh, farm harvest as well as human uh, health. So this is, you see, uh, this endosulfan eff um, affecting this child. This child was uh, deformed and then you know that the kasar board, the endosulfan, they still use for the questionnaire uh, and then uh, this is the deformation occurring in the um, um, uh, child. Whereas we developed this handhold device just like a glucometer where there is a no pesticide it give high rating with there is a pesticide it will give low lo you can see that i will discuss later on so what i wanted to say to all um, uh, august audience that these affordable diagnostics type of things very essential for our uh, safety and sustainability of the our environment so there are several biosensors or sensors are available you can see by using optical lasers or IR spectra, we can detect many parameters. So therefore, I want to uh, give my talk on the smart farming, sustainable farming, sensors, biosensor, benefit type, applications. I will give some examples and then case studies. So this is a smart farming. I think everyone knows we have harvest. Now we are using the uh, UAV or uh, drones and the NMIT, we are also working on the drones for the um, um, disease monitoring, plant disease monitoring, as well as uh, sustainable uh, pesticide, as well as nano urea, nano urea spraying on the plant to eradicate the pest and uh, plant nutrition. So based on the IoT, um, Internet of Things, we can get uh, data and transmit to the uh, farmers and then we know the uh, crop health. So I will not discuss much more. 
now we, i come to the sensors sensors are the sensing technology that uses sensors to require information by detecting the physical chemical or biological property uh, property quantity and convert them to into readable signals any signal like a ph meter or ps sensors or um, uh, temperature sensors uh, they are the example fundamental sensors device that detect the quantity and measure the object convert into quantitative readable signals so therefore we know the conditions what is um, several parameters uh, by using a drone by a visual camera and uh, we can get simulation modeling and then uh, whatever the parameters we we want to monitor we can display to the farmer this these are the situation we have some of this uh, these drones we are working on i think dr tengli has given last time uh, lecture i hope is it not dr um, uh, sridhar on the drone application in agriculture hello hello dr sridhar yeah okay so uh, the, we are working on drone for the sustainability of pesticide and nano urea in agriculture crop and horticulture crop so they have a lot of drone can do wonderful job on the uh, detail mapping of surveying of the soil condition a uh, soil type topography and other crucial parameters precision agriculture um, a drone play vital role in precision agriculture they apply fertilizer pesticides with pinpoint accuracy because uh, farmers are using pesticides immensely oh, very high quantity i think there are several videos are running in the internet that uh, uh, these as uh, manufacturers and the supplier and the uh, these uh, shopkeeper those who deal with the pesticide and fertilizer uh, if a, a small quantity has to be sprayed they will spray 200 300 times more pesticides because uh, these manufacturer they say that if you spray this pesticide we will send you in a um, uh, philippine or we will send you singapore or we will send you this place and that place and we give you um, um, good benefits so therefore they are luring and the farmers are getting suffered and you know the pesticides are very dangerous chemical they causes cancers uh, paralysis heart problems and neurotoxins so therefore this is what is happening in our country uh, other one drone can give uh, crop monitoring uh, detect the crop health growth pattern they fly over the crop regular intervals collecting data plant growth and pest infections so we will know early detection of the problems happening in the uh, crop so maintenance component of sustainable farming these are soil management crop management water management disease and pest control so like a sustainable like a soil moisture sensors they are available in uh, soil moisture sensors uh, these are the sensors measure the amount of water in the soil if more water is there then the fungal infection and a lot of things happens then the root will not develop properly and microbial growth will occur this lot of pathogens bacteria will grow so therefore this is very important that soil moisture sensor has to be used for minimum use optimal use of the water and moisture level another one is nutrient so like npk is very very important there are sensors based on the electrochemical soil npk sensors ion selective sensors like a field effector transistor based sensors and optical sensors based on the led and photodiode so they can give this photodiode can give a npk value uh, based on their uh, um, response output voltage so therefore we can uh, detect this how much is the um, nitrogen phosphorus and potassium so based on this system we can detect many things plant health sensors like a, a photosynthesis chlorophyll a photosynthesis also very very important uh, uh, and how much photosynthesis is happening based on the productivity will occur so if there is any problem immediately we have to rectify this there are sensors available for the uh, detection of the uh, chlorophyll and in terms uh, chlorophyll chlorophyll will give us a photosynthesis efficiency and crop production now uh, will uh, i will talk about the biosensors biosensors this 
or application of biosensor sustainment for me. The selection of biosensor depend on the specific requirement. What do you want to do? If suppose you want to do biosensor for the um, pest management like a fungus, uh, insect, virus, um, uh, or many other bacterial disease, uh, that is different thing. What you want, that we have to develop. Early detection of plant disease, food borne pathogens, uh, specific protein interactions, antibody antigen reactions, or nano, uh, nano uh, biotechnology we have to use, nano uh, particles we have to use, gold nanoparticles. Uh, when I say gold nanoparticles, it does not mean the very expensive. As you have seen in COVID time, there is a uh, later flow assay, two bend. If there are two bend, uh, then you will know that uh, COVID 19 uh, is a positive. If only one bend, like a pregnancy test also, COVID-19 lateral flow assay or uh, antibody antigen reaction, and that you see immediate, within few minutes, you get the results. Similarly, we can develop the biosensor for similar similar way. Another one is identify genetically modified organisms using DNA array, simple uh, glass uh, slides, you can make a sensor based on the, I will talk about that if time permits, on the DNA array, micro array, small slides can give that kind of thing. Uh, diseases, genetic label, detection, authenticity, traceability, pesticide, pollutants, monitoring of microbial contamination. Microbial contamination, uh, soil health is also very important because a lot of nitrogen fixes and bacteria are there and they are very important. And I think uh, IIHR is selling some of the, uh, some kind of um, uh, microorganism they can uh, increase the soil nutrition, nitrogen fixation, and many other things. Uh, so therefore, their health is important. Uh, in the side, uh, in the side by side, we have to monitor the uh, pathogens which causes uh, deterioration or uh, deterioration and disease to the plant. Therefore, monitoring immediately. So we have used bioluminescence or biosensor um, that we'll discuss if time permits on that. And uh, monitoring of mycotoxins, also very, very important. Mycotoxins are toxins which is produced by the um, fungus uh, in the seed or fruits. And that is very carcinogenic and very toxic to the human health. Um, uh, and uh, allergens, identify the allergens of the um, fruits and vegetables, monitoring the fertility, detection, nutrition, and many other things in the urea. Uh, in the soil in urea, nitrates, monitoring of pesticide residue in the crop, identifying the pathogens. So these are very important for our... So here you see that um, benefits of biosensor. Here is affordable uh, biosensor like a glucometer. Uh, we can use glucometer. Uh, immediately we know this how much pesticide is there. And uh, uh, repeat antigen antibody reaction, you can see if this is a one line, means there is a no such kind of pathogen available or virus available, but when you get two lines, it shows that uh, there is a virus available within no time. Only thing is that we have to generate antibodies. One should not get scared. We have to generate antibodies in the animal blood, but we can develop uh, two kind of things. One is optamer, another one is uh, without uh, using animals, another one is uh, egg yolk antibodies, which we'll talk. So therefore, uh, this biosensor can benefit the agricultural early detection of the um, uh, disease and biosensor can detect disease before symptom appears, allow the timely intervention uh, and minimize the crop damage, increase the accuracy. They can offer high specific detection compared to the visual infection, inspection, reducing the risk of the misdiagnosis and unnecessary treatment. We give quite a lot of, if there is a fungus, we'll put maximum to eradicate uh, this. Uh, in banana, I have seen many farmers, Sakotaka disease comes. They put a lot of fungicide. And we say that this uh, fruit look very nice, means it, it does not have any kind of pesticide. But most of these banana, fruit, uh, grapes, and uh, we have done this study, we'll show you, uh, contains a lot of pesticide. This pesticide is above the permissible limit. I am very frustrated about this situation in our country that pesticide usage is very, very severe. And I think the government of India and scientists have to be proactive to uh, 
to be used. As you see, organic farming will not sustain the <laughs> security, security of the food production. So therefore, it is very important that what has to use. I have visited many countries and we had a collaboration with the Indo-Swiss uh, Swiss collaboration where they wanted to detect the pesticide as parts per trillion. We did that work. But everywhere in the world they use. And organic farming cannot sustain security. Means uh, the population is increased very high. And then it is difficult to sustain the productivity uh, to feed the uh, uh, human population for three times a day. So therefore, the pesticide uh, pesticide has to uh, eradicate the <coughs> pest infections. Uh, then portabil uh, portability, if suppose there is a biosensor which is very high, um, big, it cannot be used. So therefore, this kind of biosensor can be used. Reduce the uh, pesticide uses. Uh, we can say that minimum uh, doses of pesticide is uh, required. Improve the uh, crop quality, optimize growth conditions, optimize growth conditions and better yield and quality. See, you have to yield, yield very high quantity as well as quality also very important. It should be safe, sustainable, promote the source of eff uh, efficient and environmental friendly practices. Ah, now we have come that what is biosensor. Biosensor itself is a self-contained integrated device. Most of most of you have seen that this is glucometer. Glucometer is a, a um, one important point is their biological sensing element like enzymes. Once you put the drop of blood, immediately, you, uh, within 30, 40 seconds, it will give you a reading. Means uh, the biosensor, what is the glucose oxidase enzyme, when it react, uh, react with the glucose, it produces four electrons. One molecule produces four electrons. These four electrons are amplified and given, and uh, then uh, the modeling is done, our computer programming is done, uh, how much glucose molecule are there according to the electron produce these electron uh, are amplified into uh, sig amplified signal and then this is analog signal that has to be digitalized and then it displays so therefore that you can get quantitative and semi quantitative analytical SNO test also can be done so definition of biosensor is device consists of biological active component like enzymes antibodies binding protein an electronic and optical system to convert biological event into quantifiable electronic signals that can be processed and measure accuracy. You have seen the glucometer. So this is one of the good example of the biosensor. Here I will tell, these are the, um, um, here you can see, You can see here is a uh, biological rec uh, recognition element, and here is the optical, uh, this uh, elect opto electronic device microprocessor, and it will display the unit. Uh, this is receptor molecules, it can be antibodies, enzymes, and then immobilization is very important on this thing, and physical transducer, and it displays the concentration. These antibodies, enzymes, tissues, and RNA DNA, biological component. Another component is the um, another component is optical system or electro um, uh, amperometric system, like a electrochemical device, amperometry, potentiometry, conductometry, optical device, absorption, fluorescence, luminescence, reflectance, scattering, and um, wherever you see this biological reaction, either they produce heat or consume heat. So based on colorimetric and physiometric system also, and mechanical device. So these are the few things. You can see here enzymes. I will tell some example. Uh, we have done some work on the enzyme-based biosensor. Then antibodies. We are using uh, um, um, egg, egg yolk antibodies that is called IgG. And then we detect the pesticides. 
and aptamers they are um, we can generate similar to the antibodies they are called synthetic antibodies based on uh, oligonucleotides or peptides where we uh, configure uh, the rna dna according to our choice which is very similar which can capture the um, molecule which we are targeting and then we get immediate result that gives a uh, if there is a and like a uh, uh, if it is blue color that uh, it will give indication that this much of the pesticide or pathogens or virus is there so these are few example which i will explain to you later on why biosensors because biosensors are very specific because you know blue uh, the blood contains several thousand compounds but when you put it is a dark color tar color compound um, uh, this liquid <laughs> from there it captured the glucose only there are several components and immediately to give this thing so they are very specific immediately 30 seconds you get results they are very uh, rapid highly sensitive then we can go we have detected pesticide and other uh, you know, virus or toxins as parts per trillion means 10 to the power minus 12 so very sensitive field applicable you see glucometer can be anywhere used similar that pesticide biosensor why we developed a field applicable and affordable within few hundred rupees we can get this kind of biosensor uh, and no manpower is required as a most of them you must have analyzed the pesticide or many other things uh, it takes long time you require hplc gc lcms uh, extraction purification all those things you have to do but whereas and uh, you don't require all those purification immediately if antibodies are there or enzymes are there aptam are there they are very specific even uh, um, um, in the dirty water it can detect the pesticides so therefore they are very specific and their commercial potential so all those science technology engineering electronics physics chemistry uh, biology everything is there in these biosensors so integration of all the subject it is interdisciplinary and along with the economics means uh, we have to develop biosensor which is affordable for any person simple uh, simple test uh, can be uh, useful for the uh, like a strip test which cost few pesa can be used for uh, development of biosensor so these are few things which is very important and you know conventional analytical technique if you have to identify microorganism takes long time you have to do many things you are uh, some of you may be microbiologist and suppose some fungus has to be detected you have to do a lot of things and it takes uh, may, may weeks together to identify and a specialized person is required but these immunosensors immediately give you a result this is the aspergillus or this is a this bacteria or that is bacteria or this kind of bacteria within a few minutes so therefore they are a lot of challenges and a lot of opportunity in this area so they can be they as i said high sensitivity high selectivity quick response multiplexing and disposable immediately you can uh, throw them out and they can use mass manufacturing and uh, automation can be done so therefore they are our today 4000 40000 products are available globally uh, for testing all those health um, health condition environmental sample agriculture defense and many other things uh, which is immense application and it is not fantasy it's the reality but unfortunately our country has not taken uh, that seriously that biosensor is one of the area and you know covid time we used biosensor and um, many many things like a glucometer pregnancy test they are the um, um, biosensor but we don't recognize them we don't say that they are biosensor but they are biosensor because biological system used and nanotechnology used and visual observation but it requires a lot of uh, technological involvement lot of knowledge lot of import you require to have so this is look simple but technology is complicated than any other thing than the other development so these uh, can be used biosensor application drug discovery disease detection whether it is a human disease or plant disease can be done environmental monitoring uh, noxious gases pollution everything we can do soil quality uh, food quality uh, toxin detection 
water quality, prosthetic device, and many other things are there. So, our contribution, as I said, we don't have much contribution. But I am very sure all of you recognize or realize that a biosensor has a vital role when COVID-19 was there. So, therefore, uh, I, keeping this idea, I think you realize biosensor is a one of the important parameters for the health, uh, whether it is a plant, whether a human being is very, very important. So keeping this idea, I think I am giving, emphasizing that this kind of, uh, this kind of things very important, biosensor. And now I come to science is one. Another one is the, I develop some system. Is there any use okay. of that? Yes, sir. Global market for biosensor was no, estimated no, no, US dollar no, 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 no. 28.5 billion in 2022, and no, it is a, no, 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 no. it is it is projected to reach uh, US dollar 14. Uh, you can say 50 billion uh, by 2030. Yeah, you want to say something? Growing uh, and now. Yeah, please, go, please huh. go ahead, sir. Somebody. Ah. Annoyingly, they are touching. Uh, no problem. No, I thought you want to ask some question. No, no. Uh, is it okay, sir? What going is okay, it? Sir, please, please, please go ahead. Roland, please go ahead. Sir, motion. Can I go ahead? Please, please go ahead. 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 The growing uh, this biosensor uh, annual growth rate is uh, seven point one seven point one percent over the uh, uh, period of two thousand twenty to two thousand thirty, and food and agriculture biosensor is a six point six one billion dollar twenty two two thousand twenty. Can you imagine? Uh, we have imagined this. No, I think our country has not realized. And I tell you a fact. When I went to a principal scientific advisor to the prime minister in 2019, when um, uh, Mr. Raghavan, Vijay Raghavan was the, uh, Dr. Vijay Raghavan was the PSA, I discussed in the office, I have, sir, we have to establish some kind of uh, system for sensors and biosensors, some institute, because 2019, December 22nd, I remember that, when I was going to Australia, before that I talked to him. So I thought it is very important. In January 2020, this COVID-19 appeared. And through Biosensor Society, we guided many, many companies that to develop letter flow assay, like a, a nano, um, uh, this uh, antibody antigen reaction. And people have developed. My lab has developed. Uh, this is Puna-based system. Uh, Puna-based lab developed the system for COVID-19. So what I want to say, um, as a Biosense Society president, we are promoting such thing. Now, I want those who are working on these disease diagnostics or pesticide diagnostics. I will be very happy to, uh, um, very happy to, <coughs> very happy to, uh, very happy to uh, contribute for agriculture purposes. Biosensor, and you know that agriculture bias out of um, out of um, uh, twenty eight point eight. Uh, billion dollar or expected 2030 50 billion dollar is the market and whereas 6.6 .6, uh, billion dollar in agriculture do you think that uh, india is doing anything on that no and unfortunately we don't have any graduate postgraduate or any curricula biosensor and this much is the market so therefore we are confused our country is confused what to do what not to do and then we have to plan. Pesticide is a serious issue. So therefore, I request all the scientists, those who are working, to take care of this kind of thing and promote the uh, this area as well as a pesticide. Minimum use of the pesticides. So therefore, this is my request to all scientists, those who are listening my talk, to propagate this area. Uh, that's what I said. There is a gap in the nano biosensor or biosensor technology. There is no curricula. It's it gives in the post-graduate level. And the people don't come in this area. This area is a complete uh, technology-oriented uh, system where I have told you basic biology, uh, molecular biology, genetic engineering, 
um, uh, opto electronic system uh, electronics uh, chemistry physics and uh, um, instrumentation these are all complete complete technology nowhere no subject has such kind of thing where um, you have seen dna array micro array and uh, this everyone uses a glucometer most of the people do who have um, uh, diabetes they use a um, uh, glucometer this glucometer can be converted into a pesticide biosensor and um, um, uh, asam harcourt has tell they um, have to tell that there is a no uh, detection system available for the uh, pesticide i am ready those who are scientists i can teach them i can give them they can develop this biosensor and uh, our country progresses so therefore my uh, my uh, 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 humble request to scientists they should concentrate on these issues uh, because you know diagnosis is very important if you go to if you are not feeling well uh, you go to doctor doctor immediately will not give you uh, medicines he will say you test you test this, this you do this you do that and whenever we find something leaf is not doing immediately put pesticide a uh, pesticide means a uh, fungicide and uh, insecticide put whatever you want so these are what happening in our country and then when we harvest the crop it has a lot of um, pesticides heavy metals and all other things and then we uh, blame that what is happened to us paralysis occurs uh, person has a heart problem person has this problem because cancer is uh, cancer increase in our country is due to maximum is to use of pesticides which comes as a contaminated in our um, uh, food system so therefore this is very important now i will tell you my achievement development of enzyme mediated biosensor for detection of pesticide we have used system enzymes if there is no pesticide uh, everyone can see this reading 176 if there is a this is a glucometer simple glucometer and then if there is a um, pesticide it will be immediately it will say low means it is inhibited uh, this kind of um, um, this enzyme is inhibited by the uh, pesticides so this is looking simple but we have to do quite a lot of biochemical studies biochemical technology development standardization and another thing toxins in uh, toxins and pathogens these uh, looking nice these lentils and these things uh, they have toxins like mycotoxins aflatoxin zeolanone and many uh, many things are there where we have to detect they causes the um, human health problems like uh, cancers at cftri and nmit we have developed this kind of biosensor simple uh, handhold uh, device or simple lab test but handhold device also we have done i will not speak much more on that flow injection analysis system uh, based on the simple device we'll talk about this later on these are the enzyme enzyme are antibody based um, uh, 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 immobilized micro uh, columns small columns where the automation is done immediately it gives a reading and plot the graph an iot based system we can use this water content pesticide this water can this microorganism this water contains this and soil condition and this and that we can do based on our system but we have done for the uh, food uh, food processing so therefore this is very important anything can be used now we have developed e tongue like a, a t biosensors the t stringency and color comes due to polyphenols and all you know this polyphenol content in the leaf polyphenol content in the um, uh, fruit is very important as soon as uh, some insect bite or fungus or some uh, infestation comes immediately the polyphenols get activated polyphenols uh, inactivate they work just like if i am not wrong please rectify me they work like a human body antibodies so these polyphenols acts like a phytoallergens and um, polyphenols antioxidant and they free radicals they uh, they neutralize these uh, microbes so therefore this is very important to detect the polyphenols which is defense mechanism for the plant so this is what we have done that can be estimated immediately in no time a pesticide <laughs> biosensor so these are pesticide biosensor these are very very Uh, serious problem in our country uh, 
although I have visited many countries, we had a collaboration on the pesticides, uh, biosensors for many countries. Uh, so I find that all over the world, there is a no country available which does not use pesticide. Pesticide is essential to protection of the crop. And if suppose you provoke, uh, if you say that organic farming is the best, I am very sure we cannot sustain the population food for uh, organic farming and it is also expensive. So therefore, very, very important that we have to understand minimum use of the pesticide and which pesticide, what pesticide, what quantity we have to use. Still, there are biopesticides also. They are there. We should, we should promote them. So this is few system where uh, I have taken this uh, uh, news item, uh, new item, water trans poison in Punjab. The cancer trend ran from this, I have explained. And then Assam lacks system for the immediate detection of the pesticide in farm produce, say the Guwahati High Court. This is unknown. These are the patients uh, going from Bhatinda to Bikaner, cancer patients. And especially Punjab is using excessive pesticide. And therefore, the small, the poor farmer suffers, worker, laborers, their family suffers. And um, I do not hesitate this. Uh, rich farmers, they go and agitate for uh, minimum support price. So I do not know where our country, where our farmer, and heterogeneity in our system. Some is very rich. They are sitting in Delhi uh, and agitating. Very small farmer. Nobody knows. Nobody has. They don't have uh, the uh, value for their life. They are suffering with the cancers, and it is a serious. I am openly secret, uh, secretly telling you that this is a serious problem in our country because all other uh, place we don't expose, but most of the cancers they are occurring due to pesticide uses. Of course, there are some, some other also, but excess use of pesticide is a serious problem sustenance of our um, agriculture. So I hope these agriculture scientists should take care of this. This is a serious problem, sir. You can Google cancer trend. You will know. And whatever plate loaded with the pesticide, where permission limit 4.8 ppm, where it is 860 um, more time uh, this pesticide is used. Whereas like a, um, uh, um, uh, this thing you see, rice, is uh, 0.36 ppm is required, 1,324 is present. So what you eat, it is full of pesticides. This is an open secret, sir. So therefore, these are in Bihar also, some children died because uh, that was uh, food was cooked in the school. Um, lunch time, is, um, uh, which uh, the, the pot contain pesticide, they cook the food. and. Uh, about 23 children died. So there are serious cases. Actually, we are not taking <coughs> care of this such situation. Now, I will tell list of commercially available biosensor for the plant fungal disease detection. So these are all in our country, nothing is there, sir, except uh, me and few person working on these issues. So there is a bio area. Um, that is called product is agri strip lateral flow immuno uh, chromatography. This is a big word, but nothing but simple pregnancy test, simple COVID test. So, this is big name lateral flow amino chromatography. Means what is happened there? You use an um, antibody antigen reaction, you gold nanoparticles. Gold nanoparticles are not very expensive, sir, for the detection of this. I'll tell you, it may cause gold nanoparticle, what you use for 100, 200, making 100, 200 strip, maybe about um, 10 pesos or 15 pesos. That's all. So this system developed the Spongiospora sub, uh, subterrena. Um, then pocket diagnostics, uh, lateral flow is the same thing, phytophthora. Uh, lateral flow, I mean, I, say, I will talk to you, sir. I will tell you about the mechanism of lateral flow, I say. All those lateral flow is very important. Now, you may ask question. Uh, antibodies are very expensive. No, sir, it is not expensive. I will tell you how to make. Then there is a para 
पोर्टेबल पीसीआर आरटीपीसीआर फाइटोथोरा आपको फाइटोथोरा स्पीसीज कैन बी डेवलप्ड बट लेट लेटरल फ्लो ऐसे आल्सो कैन बी डन एस पर जिला साल सो वन कैन डू सो मेनी थिंग्स आई एग्जांपल्स ऑफ दी बायो सेंसर बेस्ड डिटेक्शन सिस्टम आई विल कम टू माय एक्सपीरियंस एज आई हैव टोल्ड आई नीडंट हैव टू रिपीट इट अगेन this uh, we are using argon argon fluorine organophosphates carbamate pesticides and uh, if suppose we have to detect the pesticide um, by using splc gc spectrophotometry it takes weeks together you have to extract it is a very minimum you have to extract derivatize and put the gc and uh, hplc will give or not you have to good column and some expertise should be there and gcms there is extensive instrumentation but biosensor can give immediate results so do you don't require uh, derivatization and all those things so let us see talk about that so you know that uh, acetyl choline is this enzyme see when somebody takes um, inhale the pesticide uh, or by um, um, uh, sometime accidentally they ingest the pesticides uh, containing solution they, uh, they get paralyzed and sometime they die because their acetyl choline is a neurotransmitter enzyme get inhibited and then um, another enzyme be used acid phosphatase ascorbic acid oxidase and dehydrogenase enzymes they are used and if they can give ppm or ppb label they can detect whereas chemiluminescence fluorescence surface processor units ccd image processing and artificial intelligence nano sensors they can go nano sensors like a, a quantum dots and gold nano particles uh, they can go to parts per trillion even home to mount concentration very specific manner so we have to see what uh, so just now i told we can use enzymes acetyl choline studies or butyl choline studies uh, this enzyme uh, is available uh, sometime this uh, poultry based or uh, um, this slaughter waste we can extract this enzyme acid phosphatase uh, we can develop uh, our own system ascorbic acid also these enzymes get inhibited by the pesticide this is the mechanism of the acetyl choline this enzyme and we develop uh, polarizing potential 110 millivolts it can give directly uh, this is what we developed a biosensor acetyl choline this enzyme based system where uh, microprocessor based R2 calibration feature, two point calibration, digital display, and then response time three to four minutes, and also we can develop strip type of test, and then give accurate. Uh, here it will display how much is the concentration. We have published some papers here also, and here you can see real time plot when there is no pesticide. Once you put a pesticide, immediately it decreases according to the concentration. If it's a more pesticide, it will go like this. and then we was the um, electrode are about strip again it will come back to same direction so based on that we can detect this how much concentration is there in the pesticide so glucometer see this is glucometer everyone know can be used for our pesticide biosensor now you will be shocked to know that we can uh, develop biosensor based on glucometer how we do that we will discuss although we have Uh, uh we are filing patent on that but it will be nice if we collaborate and come out with the system actually the, here i wanted to transfer uh, transfer the technology to the uh, some semiconductor making uh, industry where they are but people are not realizing see even our country high court has to tell that there is no uh, pesticide detection system so uh, don't you feel the scientists who is working on this issue Uh, that industry is not taking interest and if suppose they say if suppose grape is there and if i find that grape has this much and i am live in the Bang bangalore mysore uh, this dot ballapur and chik ballapur they produce lot of grapes and they use excessive pesticide if i say or uh, suppose uh, some vegetable is there it has high uh, pesticide so farmer will stop selling nobody will buy so that is the problem for the farmers also so therefore it is a very serious problem of um, uh, farmers as well as an um, um, uh, monitoring government to implement this kind of 
biosensor. I think this is the crucial scenario one has to look at. Huh. Uh, with this, our system, which I have showed just now, this system we have used to detect the pesticide in um, um, cauliflower, mango, uh, Bangalore blue grape, Bangalore, uh, uh, Bangalore glob, globe, red globe, and then blue grape, then uh, lady's finger, ginger, and gre um, grapes. So we find that sample, most of the sample containing uh, pesticide, uh, these are the immediately within few minutes, it will give you a result. Other one is uh, based on nanosensors, um, uh, nanoparticles, biosensor and biomolecular biosensor, like a quantum dots and gold nanoparticles. See, if I speak on quantum dots and gold nanoparticles, they are not big issue. If you go to buy uh, the quantum dot and gold nanoparticle from Sigma, it will be very, very expensive. One cannot use. But I am sure we can synthesize in our lab, which this is not very expensive. I have done this. And I am happy to say that uh, 2000, uh, 2023, the Nobel Prize was given on quantum darts. And I have done this work, although I don't say that why I am neglected. It is not that. But it is important that quantum dart, uh, Nobel Prize given this year, and this I have published 2005 or 2003, this quantum dart. We have synthesized. This is my own picture. This is not taken from any other source. This is a good nanoparticle we synthesize. This is antibodies we require in optimers. Because antibody production is a little expensive as well as uh, tedious, but uh, uh, preparing optimers is easier. The, uh, by select method are very selective. Um, uh, this thing, uh, selective opt, um, base pairs, uh, um, uh, nucleotides. We can synthesize artificial um, uh, artificial uh, optimers. Are they are called artificial antibodies? They are also specific. I give you example. Gold nanoparticles applications. This we synthesize. This is a TMMAs. These are TMMAs. Did you see this? TMMAs. Ah, see this. Uh, we were seeing a study BMC and GNC car. Uh, that same thing we have done. TMMA. This is the strip test. Immediately pesticide containing sample. If it is there, can you see that? Uh, with there is. A <coughs> Dark color, there is no pesticide. I am sorry, it is not very much visible. But uh, uh, open eye, we can see that uh, there is no pesticide. The color disappears. So, <coughs> sorry. Simple strip we can make. These are the gold nanoparticles, antibodies. And you see there is no pesticide. The dark color, there is a lot of pesticides. The color will disappear. This is similar to that of our um, uh, COVID test, simple test. So farmer also can be if this is available. So farmers can also do this using IoT, uh, um, uh, then mobile camera. We can uh, also detect these. These are few things which in the, then uh, this is amino, amino cumuluminescence based or amino dipstick technique or lateral flow system or immuno uh, immuno um, immuno um, uh, what is that call i have just now used no that word i am not getting what is that call i have just um, uh, immuno sensors they are called immuno sensors and gold nanoparticles so here you can see uh, we can detect the up to the pest said uh, thousand nanogram. Uh, one nanogram has high um, high detectability. Thousand nanogram has a very uh, this uh, light color. So therefore, uh, uh, control has very dark color. And whereas this uh, pesticide, which has uh, very low, uh, have less uh, color. So therefore, this using this kind of uh, antibody antigen reactions we can detect our uh, uh, pesticides or virus or many other things using antibody and nanoparticles based here is the artificial antibodies where based on the rna dna
peptide uh, if there is a dark color blue color means there is no pesticide or there is no virus there is no fungus there is no uh, how much is the color based on that system we can develop so this is here also optomer system the different and uh, test tube uh, we can uh, append drop to if you take it will give a, a very positive negative uh, aspects so therefore these are quantum dots where the call uh, here is a, a semiconductor quantum dot they are also different sizes if uh, there is a size up to very low uh, it will give blue color about 2 to uh, 5 nanometer if the size increases they have different spectra so there uh, therefore detection of the plant health is one human health these kind of nanoparticles quantum dots can help for monitoring of different diseases this is a, and i am very happy to say that on this no uh, 2023 the nobel prize was given to um, on quantum dots so i feel these are the particles can be used this is a gold nanoparticle based lateral flow system where uh, covid 19 and similarly the virus plant virus this virus can be detected easily so and uh, using quantum dots and gold nanoparticles we can study the uh, uh, fluorescence resonance transfer or it is called fuster resonance energy transfers cret means chemoluminescence resonance transfer bret uh, bioluminescence resonance transfers so using this phenomena this looks complicated but it is a simple test tube type of thing where photodiode is used and you will can detect the whatever you want even health condition of the plant health condition of human being virus bacteria uh, toxins environmental pollution can be detected by using such system so therefore these are very very important for the uh, this thing this is a fret i will not go detail if time permits uh, next time i will talk about this so what i wanted to say antibody production with the egg this egg uh, you can give mg of the antibody specific antibodies one egg can give few mg please listen me carefully whereas 1 liter of the uh, blood of the higher animal like a rabbit will give few microgram of the antibodies so they are called igg they are called ig by egg antibodies called ig by whereas the blood higher animal called igg but we are producing a same antibody same thing can be produced for any analyte in the yolk egg antibodies this is a what i call golden egg so therefore we have to concentrate on these issues i will not go much more detail this is the system we developed very small it can be miniaturized and put it to hand that can be taken into the uh, field and if you suppose you have some um, uh, leaf if virus disease is there just extract some liquid from the leaf are infected put a drop of the uh, drop of the infected leaf exudate fluids if you get too bent then you say that this virus is present if one bent is get you don't you needn't have to do anything because there is no virus present or fungus present or bacteria present so therefore this is very important and uh, i will not talk about the fred brett and bioluminescence is also very important uh, uh, hrp based system hrp react with the um, uh, peroxidase and hartz roger peroxidase it gives a light with the luminescence so therefore that can be also very important this plant virus uh, can be detected Uh, by using this system this is a automatic flow injection analysis system uh, this is what uh, reactor immuno reactors where we do very simple way this is ccd based image processing uh, one can do uh, detection bioluminescence means soil health and uh, bacteria contamination can be done in water within 2 minutes you can detect how many bacteria is present in soil also if soil health you want to do it within few minutes you can detect how many bacteria is there but if you want to see what is pathogenic bacteria or what is um, nitrogen fixing bacteria you cannot do immediately you have to do immuno <coughs> sensors for this so i will not go much more detail i think i am also feeling tired so therefore i stop here and then uh, i give this is a experimental on bioluminescence for freshness 
of the meat and it can be used freshness of the fruits also so i conclude that so there is a very important there is a biosensor have tremendous applications everywhere what i say human health environment agriculture horticulture defense and many other it is unlimited applications in space also biosensors are used so therefore there is a immense um, applications for the biosensor and uh, i am i am very very uh, unhappy with the use of pesticide in our country if suppose our scientists i request sample request that we should propagate not to use excessive pesticide farmer not for us but for their family because they consume lot of uh, food products is contaminated with the food and they do not know how to use that lot of farmer is spray pesticide without covering their mask without covering anything and i am sure when i go to my place uh, in mysore i uh, i stay in mysore nearby i go and uh, uh, donate uh, this uh, mask uh, for the pesticide uh, prevention and google but still it cost about 400 500 rupees it's sad but people don't use that they will throw is sir agala namge i don't want to use this i get suffocated this and that so i am very much worried about the farmers health and uh, therefore uh, there is a lot of opportunity available lot of things available for the sustainable farming and uh, sustainable farming for the security and safety of the our uh, agriculture product and uh, i feel uh, there is a lot of thing has to be done uh, in our country child should be happy and they should not be uh, suffer with the health conditions and abdul kalam ji ne kaha kuch bhi naya karne mein sankoch mat karo ye mat socho haar hogi haar to kabhi nahi hoti hai ya to jeet milegi ya fir hum seekh milegi to humko uh, now we have to learn from our experiences because lot of responsibility lies on agriculture farmers Uh, agriculture scientist uh, to protect the health of the our country population as well as farmers uh, to prevent uh, their health condition to develop sustainable uh, sensors uh, for optimizing the crop yield thank you so much uh, thank you so much i hope i have given uh, whatever is required and i feel uh, we have to concentrate on that thank you so much Uh, thank you so much uh, dr sridhar i hope i have done something which is useful for our country thank you so much thank you thank you so much sir for your excellent presentation on uh, biosensors you have gone up to nano biosensors and whatever may be mechanism uh, uh, mechanisms like inhibition of some enzymes or bioluminescence antibody yes. antigen reactions different yes, ways of uh, 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 <clears throat> measuring and uh, quantifying whether it is a, a, maybe a fungus causing uh, diseases or residues of different chemicals very very i mean sir overall you gave a very broad view of what is the importance particularly used a word there is a unlimited scope of biosensors it is true sir some of the icr institutes they are working in, uh, not many in, for a detection of uh, uh, insecticides some they did and overall it is an excellent uh, presentation i should say now i request to the participants if you have uh, a, any queries or clarifications you need please come forward uh, before i take and i the, request uh, sir, whoever uh, is uh, they, they may be joining from different institutes different places yes yeah, yeah. uh, yes you have come forward uh, yes, being sir. a person who worked in biosensors yes, uh, at uh, cftri or presently working in nmit Yes, uh, this is a, a opportunity to uh, have one uh, collaborative uh, effort sure, from sure. that is what about to say uh, just yes, I, i i would like to i invite whoever is online uh, uh, please come forward and uh, participate in the discussion thank you sir. yes sir so, i want to say sir one minute sir i want yeah, yeah, to please. request dr sridhar or anyone i can whatever i have developed the glucometer sensor so, i can yeah, use and validate and um, transfer the technology if required yeah, and okay, whomsoever okay. comes we can validate once again because i have done from my side 
because there are a lot, lot of limitations for me because i don't have very sufficient instrument to validate i am yes. ready to validate my sensors with your help dr sridhar if you okay, can okay okay thank you sir with... uh, please unshare yeah. that means, yeah. so that we will okay. go with uh, individual yeah. okay, uh, okay. parts so yes. please yes. unshare sir. please Yes. So, so, so I am Vijendra Bhalla. Uh, I have a uh, doctor, sir. Namaskar. I am from okay. Intech Chandigarh. Yes. Okay. Intech yeah. Chandigarh. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, doctor Suri, you may be knowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You also know me, sir. I am Vijendra Bhalla. I know. I know very well. I know he's a good friend so, of mine. Come on, Suri. I yeah. cannot see you. Uh, can yeah, you? Oh, I can be online. It's uh, I can come online. Yeah. Yes, okay. Sir. Hello. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, sir, uh, excellent presentation. But I just have a small uh, query, like. Uh, yes. Uh, in terms of uh, pesticides uh, like uh, or small molecules what do you think is the uh, concern uh, which molecules as of now, now as of today because you guys have been working on organo uh, pesticides and yes. atrazine diro classical pesticides so yes. what is what is as of today what is the, uh, which molecule is of concern if we try to develop some detection technologies and if you have any ins insights because you have been into the committees and yes Sure, thank you. Yeah, because as you said, these uh, pesticides or fungicide or whatever, they are a small molecule. Mm -hmm. And uh, raising the antibodies is difficult. Mm -hmm. But what is happened there, we can make a, uh, a little bit conjugate with the BSA. BSA. Oh, no, no, that is okay, sir. I am just uh, interested in the name of the mo molecules. What do you think as of uh, in present? Uh, Methyl, of... parathion, uh, okay, perexons. Okay. Um, okay. endosulfon although it is banned but people okay. are still using it mm -hmm. and um, esophate um, many other I am not getting immediately name okay. to them but still um, they are they have been used many 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 enzymes um, many many pesticides mm -hmm. they are being used and they are toxic to the human I think Dr. Sridhar may give more insight uh, yeah, what I say then said, organophosphorus yeah. organochlorines and yeah. carbamates in that, there is a different trade names and chemical name. So, we can detect all those organophosphates, organochlorines, and carbamates using our biosensor. But, yes, sir. To uh, supplement uh, this one, one minute, sir. You might have, but as of now, we are having uh, maybe some sensors, uh, as you told, they are mainly for the organophosphorus compounds. Yes. But world over, if you see the consumption of uh, highest, we can say highest consumption is from the group of uh, neonicotinoids. Mm. Uh, there, there, because now we have more than 30 groups of uh, uh, pesticides grouped by Insecticide Resist uh, Resistance Action Committee. Each one, each group is having different mode of actions. Based on this uh, mode of action, our biosensors may need to be uh, retuned. Uh, whatever uh, uh, that Thakur, yeah, you, have, you have already worked with OP compounds, yes. maybe some cyclodienes and carbamates. There yes. are other groups because uh, uh, in the recent past, yes. these chemicals, OPs, carbamates, or cyclodenes, they are being replaced with the new uh, generation of molecules uh, with different modes of action. So we may have to start with that. And in my opinion, uh, there is a neonicotinoids is a group where highest consumption of uh, uh, pesticides all over it is happening. Though there are few uh, regions like Europe, they started uh, uh, banning some of the neonicotinoids uh, because they are highly toxic to the pollinators. But world over, that is the one of the highest uh, group consumed in different crops. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I, have one more point. I, I have yeah. one more point to add. We have developed, see, this biosensor, uh, see, bioluminescence, which I did not take much uh, uh, explanation on that. Uh, see, this bacterial or uh, um, uh, firefly based, we have immobilized those weeds. Those weeds we have immobilized on uh, on some of the substrate and when we put what kind of pesticide or toxins immediately their luminescence goes down so what is happened there if there is any toxins whether it is a carbamates whether it is a uh, niacinamide is it niacinamide enzyme uh, this pesticide neonicotinoids uh, neonicotinoid or whomsoever which affect the uh, insect or livingness immediately the uh, bioluminescence goes down that i did not explain to you although i have just briefly t uh, told you that can be used for this purpose also immediate detection by using optical sensors photodiode 
which cast able or ccd camera which is comes in your uh, um, um, laptop or uh, your uh, um, simple mobile camera can be used for that purpose so yeah, that, that can be used something. but we have to do because we have to interface with uh, um, uh, scientists like sridhar and uh, dr sridhar and other people those who are working that line because i am um, uh, um, biosensor specialist so i do not know many uh, complicated issues which you are facing it yeah but this is I, where we need a collaboration between yes, yeah, uh, people who yes. are into bio True. Or where we are working maybe plant yes. protection group or plant health related uh, yes. as you told there is a ample scope for uh, biosensors yes uh, basically taking the uh, internal reactions detection outwards in a simple way uh, yes. As you reflected in your title of the topic, affordable biosensors. Yes, affordable biosensors. Yeah. So, uh, sir, uh, uh, Dr. Bhalla, I think yeah. I, I I explained to your um, queries. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. if you permit me, I have just one la last. Uh, yes. In terms of the, you know, if we have developed some, uh, if we develop some kind of a device like you showed, hmm. uh, what sh should be the re regulatory authorities to approve uh, that kind uh, of yes, device? Yes, yes. That is there. So, that's for... Uh, some like um, IIHR or those who are working on this has to be approved. Mm -hmm. First of all, we have to validate. We have done from our side. Mm -hmm. We have taken different um, uh, vegetables and fruits mm -hmm. uh, and we did it our own way. But we have no authenticated um, um, institute where we can authenticate this. I wanted collaboration with uh, IIHR or any one institute, those who are interested. I'm I'm very sure we can develop this, um, this affordable biosensor for pesticides. So FSSI is not going to play, play a role no, in no, it? No, 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 no. They, they are monitoring system. They are monitoring. They cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. They can they can help in uh, um, uh, fixing the limit, lower limit or um, 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 lower limit or whatever permissible limit. But they do not know. I was in a FSSI. When I was talking biosensor, they don't care for biosensor. Mm -hmm. Although mm -hmm. COVID-19 has been used for human health, mm -hmm. they believe, but the FSI does not believe the same system. If you develop, they will don't believe. I had a difficult time to argue with them. <coughs> they don't recognize. Okay, COVID-19, everyone see if the two lines comes, our pregnancy test, sir. If two lines comes, they are pregnant. And if suppose uh, COVID two lines comes, uh, you have positive. Uh, similarly, if you use for the food and uh, um, um, uh, this uh, horticulture or pesticide, they will not believe. As if they feel that because they have, it has not gone to their mind. Because their mind is fixed. In our country, scientists, those who are in FSSI, are those regulatory authorities, their mind is fixed. Only HPLC, GC, GCMS, NMR can only they. If they identify the value, that is by my experience. I was in that. I had a hard time to argue with them. One can use, one can use for the health condition, but they don't want to allow for food. What is this? I'm really frustrated with attitude of this um, uh, authorities, FSSI. They have fixed mind. I'm sorry to say that. So there is no prescribed method to do the validation no. of a pesticide uh, device, uh, no, detection but device. They can do GCMS, HPLC, GC. They are they they are very happy. It takes no, but years there has to be something to convince the regulator, no? Because yes, in, uh, to, but yeah. it has to. Go there has to be some regulatory mind, no? authority. Uh, in, uh, maybe, I have told, yeah, I have told yeah, many yeah. people, yeah. and CFTR is one of the authority. I have told mm -hmm. them they don't recognize. They feel that okay. is a fantasy, not reality. <laughs> Sorry about it. I am little aggressive on this issue. Yes. Okay, sir. Regarding residues uh, through biosensors, they may not be. Uh, regarding the general assessment of residues uh, at IHR, also, there is a state of art uh, uh, residue analysis lab, lab is there. Yes. Sir. Uh, what you are telling, suppose the detection levels, at mm. what level these biosensors are capable? One doubts are generally. Uh, in our residues labs, they are uh, detecting at a PP, PPM level. Yes, sir. But for some of the products, it is to be at a PPB level. In recent, yes. in the recent past, when you are yes, exporting sir. either grapes or mango. Yeah. Uh, what is the scope of this biosensors? Uh, either it is a S or no. From that place to, can they 
quantify also as a yes, ppf ppb positive yes, yes, what yes, is sir. the ppt yeah, level ppt level right. ppt level yes, okay okay how quantification is ha quantification is possible how we can do like a, a when i talk antibodies people get scared oh production of antibodies is very serious we have to inject the rabbit we have to inject this and that suck the blood and is not 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 this uh, that is what i call and advocate people to use egg yolk antibodies you uh, antigen you inject to the hen and it will give a <coughs> egg which contains very high amount of the antibodies that may be 1 to 10 mg whereas a 1 liter of the blood may contain 10 to 15 microgram where it contains 1 to 10 mg very nice production we have done this and they are very stable and if you mobilize on lateral flow as immediately it will give you whether this is present or not second thing how you can detect as i said if you take strip a strip you sometime you may not able to see whether the strip is dark or less dark you put it into luminescence luminescence means lucifer or not uh, luminol sample it will give 100 times uh, 200 times signal amplification amplification simple photo diode you put that <coughs> you can detect that is called uh, chemoluminescence resonance energy transfer because gold nanoparticles enhances the photon production that avalanche occurs so therefore using uh, simple uh, paper strip having antibody antigen and gold nanoparticle if you dip that in luminol sample immediately it gives a flare of the light you detect a photodiode and get the signal so you get very accurate and we have done we have validated parts per trillion trillion parts per trillion okay okay thank you sir anybody else yeah if uh, nobody uh, i once again profusely thank dr ms thakur sir for coming forward and giving an excellent uh, uh, means view about the biosensors and he shared his own work where uh, he worked on biosensors that is thing uh, and uh, he he gave a, in such a way that it is not a big sense it is easy to go ahead uh, suppose we have a lot of requirement uh, in agriculture uh, in terms of using biosensors only thing is coming out with biosensors and they should be at an affordable price in that way uh, actually it is not only for the producers for consumers they if it is available they will be very happy nowadays consumers are uh, consumers of food yeah, particularly they are very um, uh, means uh, having the idea about these uh, pesticide problems these problems in our country what i feel if it is emphasized suppose produce from some uh, some village or a cluster of villages city is highly contaminated uh, if you make it very clear it, it is uh, not good that way only you can educate if you whatever way we are telling suppose sometimes what is happening if you are uh, advising for that particular chemical 0.5 ml they are going the double dose sometimes three times the dose also oh, so much sir but uh, in, in a compulsion way only if the produce coming from there it is having uh, residues means naturally it will come down one example i would share share is uh, uh, at national level when grapes was uh, uh, exported few uh, years back it was rejected from european countries since then there is an icr institute nrc and grapes they have come out with the pesticides which should not be sprayed so many x y z days before and now almost all products are going without any uh, residues that is good for exports also even for the uh, local consumption that way we have to educate the farmers first for that this type of easy detection things if we are having it is easy instead of every time uh, sending to residues lab and uh, making that residues labs also at uh, national level they are making surveys on different agricultural products uh, it is happening uh, but this will go a long way as you explain uh, now i request dr mohan sundaram who raised the hand please go ahead
that uh, please unmute and proceed proceed Yeah, please speak, Dr. Mohan Sundara. Uh, we are unable to hear. Please check your microphone. Or you can uh, alternatively can put your question in chat box also. Yeah, there is a problem with this uh, microphone. Anybody else? Yeah, he is trying to ask questions through yes, chat box, sir. Just yes, to wait yes, tell half me, a sir. minute. Yeah, anybody else? Yeah, he is not Mount Sundram. I think he is from NRC Banana. He is working on Banana. Banana. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Very nice. <laughs> Coming to residues, major problem are uh, this uh, grapes. Is a uh, grapes when you are exporting, it can be mango or whatever is uh, no, exported, really, which is sir, directly all consumed. Crops, all crops are uh, so yeah, much yeah. pesticides. Yes. Whatever you do now, mango flowering is there. Then the, the farmers are putting uh, spraying with pesticides. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah, it is required. But no, it is required, yeah. sir. But they do not know how much to be put. And yeah, without, yeah. Without and now. <laughs> Correct. Uh, his question is uh, in banana there is a problem of pseudo stem oil. that means it will be uh, within the that stem of that uh, uh, banana which ca we call it as pseudo stem uh, it's uh, if some pest is there inside is there any way of uh, detection using sensors yes, sir. yes good question uh, actually what i know is uh, if it is a borer which yeah. can make there are so, uh, efforts like in mango stem borer Yes, there are uh, acoustic related yes, sound sir, mag uh, magnification. Uh, his question is uh, pest like pseudo stem evil, uh, which is inside the stem. Can we use sensors to detect? It is, it is that is his question, sir. Yes, uh, as you said, this uh, ultrasound and, uh, uh, and another hint yeah. is telling because in that stem it is full of water. <laughs> Banana full of stem. Water. Yes, yeah. yes. So, what is happened there? These um, insect also, another thing is that. As you said, it is a, a, a sound-based system can be used. Another point is that they, they, all insects, if there are few insects of this um, uh, vowel, uh, which secrete the uric acid, urea, uric acid, sorry, uric acid. Because uh, when they eat, they will exude the uric acid. Then from the plant uh, exudates or plant uh, some fruits, which is nearby, we can detect that uric acid. Because uric acid is also another indicator of the insect project. It can be done. Okay. Voice can be done. Yeah. Right. Uh, another one is yeah, a sound, yeah. sound based. Because when one they is cut, sound based, one uh, is uh, other based and they actually uric acid. Uric acid based. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Dr. Girish? Yes, yeah, sir. Good morning. I am Naglish, plant pathology scientist. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, that Nagalakshmi. Uh, the, these uh, sensors are working against all the fungicides, sir. Sir, have it tested against all the fungicides, which are majorly used for the management of post harvest diseases. Yes, madam. Uh, uh, whatever is available in the market, uh, like a fungicide. Okay. Uh, which is the um, uh, many fungicide? I don't remember name. We have tried and it can be used, but there are few which has come recently. We do not know much about that. But like a, um, uh, I am not able to remember. Few fungicide we have used to detect by the uh, biosensor. It works. Okay. If you share the technology, then we will uh, definitely will uh, test against our all uh, market uh, 
marketable fruits and vegetables again it's the fungicides also you, sir will stand uh, which uh, you are in ihr uh, chap no sir i am in uh, dr vyasar hu where ஹார்டிகல்ச்சுனிவர்சிட்டி before and uh, dr tarko gives his uh, contact details anybody else otherwise once that details are here we will uh, uh, conclude today's talk chat box is right this no can you come at the phone it's my number in it yes yes sir yes yeah, it is there ah. yeah just uh, yeah it is there dr nagalakshmi you can note down that number and email yeah i have sent madam yeah yeah, yeah. you can enter okay sir thank note. you sir note it down yeah. okay okay uh, thank you sir uh, with this we will uh, come to an end uh, at the end from our association as well as ihr side uh, we profusely thank you for giving a bird eye view of uh, sensors biosensors nano biosensors uh, particularly they they are using agriculture hope uh, whoever is interested we are also having now students uh, from uh, pg if somebody is uh, interested or if it is there we will take your help in uh, uh, in attempting to come out with some uh, sensors in this line i once again thank you profusely uh, and uh, we will meet in next month with a new uh, speaker and new topic thank you thank you so much sir thank you particularly uh, i thank all the participants who joined online as well as physical thank you thank you so much thank you sir for giving wonderful thank uh, information thank you very much so all the best to you let us go we will meet sometime okay bye thank you Okay thank you I am ending the meeting thank you so much